Wow. Holy mackerel. I hope everybody is made their way here. All right, my my pleasant happy opening has just been <laughs> popped in the jaw by um YouTube and OBS just being very very confused. I went through a bunch of confusion um this morning when I went to schedule this live and discovered that my OBS and my YouTube couldn't find each other with both hands in a flashlight and I had to redo the key and then I got it set up to where OBS saw what I scheduled on YouTube but then when I hit it live it didn't connect I had to try to connect like three different times so I'm so glad you're here hi Amy hi Sherry and thank you thank you Sherry so much for the Wicca Oracle I will be unboxing that this Friday thank you a lovely lovely gift and I also want to say thank you uh, to Baronessa Scotty. I hope she makes it tonight for her incredibly, incredibly generous donation. Um, I have purchased four so far with that donation and we'll be purchasing more. So thank you so much and thank just thanks for being here so I'm not talking to, to air. <laughs> oh my God, yes, I am feeling so much better. Um, I am back. I got the golden clunk this morning, although it wasn't so much a clunk as a click. And it's what I call when, you know, it finally goes back in. There's like a pop. Sometimes it's a really profound thunk, this deep thing. But this morning I was in bed and I just stretched and click. I felt that last little click go in. So, yeah, I'm mobile. I am drug free. Thank God. I mean, five solid days of muscle relaxers during the day is just no fun. You know, I just get really spacey. Um, but what I want to talk about on that topic to start off here is I want to talk a little bit about surrender. Um, surrender is a Neptunian thing and I have a focalized Neptune in my chart. It rules my moon. It trines my moon. It squares my sun. So um, all of my, all of the outer planets, the, the outer planets in natal charts, since they are so slow moving, they tend to have more generational effects than individual personality effects unless they connect with the personal points in your chart, like connect with the ascendant or midheaven or sun or moon particularly but also you know it, the inner planets um, mercury venus mars if they're in um, close aspect to those planets they they also color your individual personality but mostly if they connect with your lights in some way and all three of the outer planets connect with my lights and neptune hits both of them um, so i have a lot of neptunian issues <laughs> in my life and one of the key phrases for Neptune is serve or suffer. Um, Neptune asks that you, that you serve, that you sacrifice. And it also asks that you surrender. And a week like last week, I don't think my Flonase has to be in frame, does it? Okay. <laughs> A week like last week really brings um, the topic of uh, surrender up close and personal. And we're used to, in our, you know, Western heads, when we think of surrender, we think of giving up. We think of um, lo loss. We think of failure and loss, that I surrendered, which means I quit and I gave up. And... Neptune asks us to think about it in a different way because Neptune also rules spirituality and the dissolving of boundaries, the ability to recognize and, and perceive the unity that really is the reality. Um, and so surrender in a Neptunian sense is about recognizing that you're not in control 
and stopping that effort. So it's, it's, it, it's grace. Neptune rules grace as well. So it is a, an act of grace to say, I'm not in control of this. And rather than struggle with that fact, I am going to fully accept that fact and relinquish my, you know, my strenuous efforts at control. And when you do that, when you recognize a situation in which you're not in control and you do give up trying to control and you relax into the situation or relax into just the fact of I'm, this is float time. It's not swim time, it's float time. <laughs> and when you kind of throw your arms back and float and surrender, then you can get carried. You get carried along and frequently you get carried to places that you would not have gone if you had, you know, wrestled yourself there on your own. Um, notice all the watery words I just used. And think about this, when you're in water and you're struggling, um, struggling and thrashing and fighting the water, um, that's big trouble, right? That's when you're, you know, you're going down and the water is swallowing you and, and you fight and fight and fight and fight. But if you just throw your arms out and lie back, you know, and take a deep breath, the water will hold you up rather than dragging you down. So the last week was an exercise in surrender. And I missed you guys. <laughs> I missed you. And, uh, you know, it brought up all my other Neptunian neurotic shit of, you know, I miss my live streams my Wednesday and my Saturday live stream and my patron call on Sunday and everybody's going to abandon me. You know, everybody's going to leave. They're going to forget all about me. And they're not going to be there. And, you know, it, it, it's that that horrible fantasy of, you know, loss and abandonment. But here you are and here I am and I missed you and I hope you missed me. <laughs> but it was a nice break as well, you know, and I really have to... Um, I, I learned this when my daughter was a baby, when Morgana was an infant and I was single momming it. And I would have plans and here are things I need to do today. And you wake up and the kid is sick. You know, the baby is sick and just wants to nurse all day. And so it would be like, okay, well, everything's off the schedule and settle into nurturing care. Well, I did that same thing, but I settled into nurturing care of me and asking for help in my family, as wonderful as they are. You know, all I had to say is, can somebody help me? Yes, 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 yes. You know, so um, it it was kind of lovely in its own sense of just um, surrendering and letting go of an agenda and letting go of a schedule and letting go of, you know, crazy ideas of if I don't do this, no one will love me anymore. So, so that's where I am now. And I'm very ready to play. I am so ready to play tonight. And I have some wonderful toys to play with. So let's take a look. Oh, I did not like my, my charcoal. Did you like? Oh, for Pete's sake. Zippity doo da, come on. All right, there we go. So, what I have tonight is the uh, mystical manga oracle, or the mystical manga tarot, and the foxfire kitsune oracle, and I've listed those down below. Um, they're just wonderful, and I had grabbed the kitsune first and then I thought what do I want to pair with this you know it's like wine pairings I've got this Japanese kitsune deck and I'm gonna what am I gonna pair okay we'll go with the Japanese tarot deck which is the the mystical manga having a couple other Japanese tarot decks that don't do it for me at all this one really does and I should probably you know what I think I will probably start adding links below 
um, to my unboxings of the decks because frequently someone will ask, you know, what decks are you using? And that way you can go straight there and take a look at the whole deck. Um, but as I have gotten in the habit of doing during the day before a live stream, and I'm thinking about here are the decks that are calling me and I will ask the decks, what do you have to tell me? What do you want to say here? You know, how do you want to be used tonight? You know, are you up for this? So I did this one and I got the Six of Cups, which is about wonderful memories. And it's also in this deck, it talks about a gift freely given, just, you know, a gift of the heart and the wonderful memory of that. And then the moon came out. And as we're speaking here, uh, the moon is exactly conjuncting my ascendant, sitting right smack on my ascendant, solitary. So, you know, here's Luna popping out. <laughs> and the moon to me in this context, since I was asking about um, if this deck wanted to come out and play tonight, um, the moon is rules this process, this psychic process, this process of pulling back the veil and, you know, finding answers, pulling answers out of the mystery and being attuned to subtle energies. So that one right away said, yes, I want to play. And then on the other side of that, we got the Ten of Cups, which is just about fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. So all of this is very watery and lunar. And that made me very happy and told me unequivocally, yes, this deck wanted to play with us tonight. And then the Kitsune gave me um, one called Tending the Future. And my husband spent all day on this beautiful, sunny, spring-like day. It was 57 degrees. Um, he was out cleaning off the patio and, you know, shoveling all the, um, the sunflower hulls from feeding all winter in the snow. The snow melts and we've got sunflower seed hulls like this thick. He's shoveling it out into the woods. And I went out and sat for a little while out in the sun um, but this talks about gardening. It says tending the future. And the first thing that we do in order to tend the future is to plan. And what are we doing? You know, people that are witchy gardeners and things right now are pouring over your seed catalogs and deciding what you want to plant. And it's nice because I can look back in the woods and see all the things that I want to clear out. We've got a lot of honeysuckle back there and it's beautiful and it smells wonderful and it's invasive as hell and not a good thing for local species. So I think I'm going to go back and trim those down, not not take them out completely. But so many more have come up because of where the seeds get stick, scattered. So I think I'm going to trim them down so we have a couple because I want to start growing um, cherry trees and apple trees. And, you know, I might only have room for a couple back there, but I think it's worth doing. So this is talking about spring on its way because it's coming. You guys, spring is here in a matter of a couple of weeks. Light wise, weather wise, we're in Northeast Ohio. We call this fool spring <laughs> because we know there's a lot more winter to come, maybe even into, you know, the end of April, sometimes even into May lately. So um, but light wise, that's what really counts is I feel my brain waking up as the light keeps waxing. And when we hit the equinox to where the light takes over the dark, um, this year I have had such a profound experience of my um, SAD. I mean, really, really profound experience. And the depression, and, and when I say depression, it's not, you know, oh, I'm sad all the time. It's just the lack of motivation, the inability to just kind of, get up the energy and motivation to do things. And that's just the, the effect of the lack of light on my brain and on my body. So I'm very excited about the light coming back. And this card says, yes, let's start thinking about spring and making plans. You know, forget about whether the weather's going to be good or not from day to day or when spring arrives. It's a process. We know this. So spring is on its way. We also know this. Let's rejoice in that fact. All right, and start planning our gardens. All right, who else is here? If you're here, hit that like button for me, please, and check in and say hi so I can say hi to you. 
And oh, here's the other thing I have, which is rather exciting. So with all of these, you know, the, the, the cups and the moon, the watery Neptune cards here and the spring card here, I got in the mail today one of the little things I got myself with Baroness of Scotty's lovely donation. And I had to buy four sets because one set was nine bucks and four sets was 10 bucks. So what would you do? Look at these. These are 12 sided die dice. And this one has the 10 planets and the north and south nodes. This one has all the signs. This one has all the houses. So we've got astrology dice here. So I threw them. You know, what's going to, how, how are you up for playing? Are you up for playing tonight? Venus in Pisces, <laughs> the sign that Neptune rules, water sign. In the eighth house, Scorpio's sign, or so Scorpio's natural house. The moon is in Scorpio right now. So we've got a water moon. It's just all coming together. I'm so happy. So Venus in Pisces in the eighth house. What is this telling us? Venus is... Um, the attraction principle. Venus is love and affection. It's what we like. It's what we desire just in terms of, um, I like this. It's sensual pleasures. Things that I like to look at, to taste, to feel, to hear, to smell. And, and it's love. It's love, sweet love and affection. In Pisces, it's a love that is... Um, deeply connected, that is without boundaries, that sacrifices, that is willing to give, that surrenders. Neptune, Pisces, surrender. Here we go. And it's also, Venus in Pisces is all about the arts. It's about beauty and the appreciation of beauty and this, this sense of um, sensitivity to subtle beauty and to inspiration. And in the eighth house, it talks about magic magic and the occult and the, what what hides behind the veil and being able to work magic and those subtle kinds of energies so we've got all kinds of omens here for just a, a spectacular night let's get to it shall we hi holly how are you welcome my dear where are you watching from pop in tell us where you're from join the group make yourself known all right i'm going to i'm going to turn up my waves just a little bit you guys tell me if they're too loud cuz i can't hear them i have my speakers shut off and i have my um oh i didn't do that sorry oh that might sound a little better to you i forgot to click mute because it picks up desktop audio so it pick up what's playing on my youtube as well as what's playing on my iTunes. Good gravy. All right. There's a couple. A couple shuffles. We'll do a couple shuffles here. We'll call in our gang and we'll get going. And I'm going to do the spread and pull anyway, so I don't really have to spend a lot of time shuffling, although it is a joy with these decks. They're both very loose. Um, let's do this first. All right, if you just settle in with me, settle into your body. And I ask my allies and ancestors, my guides and guardians, to please step forward, be present as you always are. I thank you for being present and bringing these wonderful messages to my mind helping me to do what I've been put here to do. I thank you for your presence. Please help me deliver messages that are helpful and practical and insightful and inspirational to my wonderful viewers. I thank you for being here. And I offer you the fire of Azrael. As a gift to these wonderful tools. May you absorb the spirit of pure divination. So mode it be. And let's do a little bit of a, I've got a little bit of sage here. 
Just a quick little smoke cleanse for you. I wish you could smell what I'm smelling. I am planning to um, make some Fire of Azrael to sell, but boy, that part of my business has just been kind of stalled. Looking forward to spring to loosen that up a little bit. All right. These wonderful dice. Okay. Now, let me see. I'm going to pull this down a little bit and pull this back a little bit. I need a bigger desk. Can you tell? All right. La, 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 la. So these dice on Amazon, these astrology dice, um, come with this little velvet bag. Very nice. I gave my son a set already. I'm going to give my daughter a set. So Pisces is who comes up first in Pisces season. I'm going to take one of each deck. And then all right. So we have the three of wands and we have threshold in the kitsune. And now let's see what we get here. Saturn, Gemini, 10. All right. So Pisces, for you, there's something here that you've been working on and we're waiting for return on investment, ROI. That's where we're at. We're on the threshold of something. So let's see. There's... Um, it's time to really take responsibility for your gifts, for your talents, for your skills. Um, this talks about looking to the future because I know what I have to offer and I'm offering my gifts and I'm looking to see it mirrored back to me. Um, Threshold just says it's a time of change where, you know, Pisces season is a time of change. It's a, um, a mutable sign which ends up the seasons, wraps up the seasons. Um, it rules a cadent house. So the mutable signs bring in change from one season to the next. So Pisces, you've done your best in this season of winter. And now you're looking forward and going, all right, it's time for a change to come. It's time to see the results of the work that I've done internally over the winter and just pausing on that threshold before we take a step over. And I do have, I'm going to go, you know, intuitively tonight, but I do have the books here if we want to look at um, what the decks say. And I'm going to do that right now with the Three of Rods because this deck, one of the wonderful parts about it is it has an advice section. It has, um, here we go. It has the meanings, and then it has advice, and then the reverse meanings. Make use of this time by doing what you can to help things along and plan for your next step. Okay, so that's it. We're looking at the threshold. What's next? What did you accomplish over the winter, and what has that set you up for with spring on its way? And looking at, you know, what change that's bringing in. Threshold here is talking about change. Now let's look at what these have to say. Saturn in Gemini in the 10th. Saturn is the natural ruler of the 10th house. So this is also talking about authority, as the Three of Rods does too. Um, the authoritative steps that you take in order to achieve and accomplish, that's 10th house. And Gemini specifies communication. Um, what responsibility have you taken for communicating? Uh, the things that you want to achieve for communicating to people about what you want to achieve, the people that can help you. Um, 
so that's it. You just need to be responsible for your achievements, for making plans and communicating those plans. And Threshold says you're on the brink of that change there. So the more the more clearly you can identify um, the things you th that you've been working on, Pisces, the more conscious you are of those things, the easier it will be um, to see what change is coming and to take that step across the threshold. Okay. Let's look at Aries. I'm going to, as I do, God, you guys, I mean, I watch myself do these things and I just can't help it. Rearranging the furniture. I set things up and I go, that's nice. And then I have to change it all. All right. Aries. Hi, Michelle. Oh, hi, Holly from Ontario. Wow. What's the weather like up there? And hi, Michelle from California. Welcome, everyone. Um, take a second to hit that like button. I really appreciate it. It does help me. Okay. Aries. You're telling me way over. And oh, I got to get these out of the way. Okay. We have Page of Swords. And we have Call Forth the Waves. So Page of Swords talks about the intellect, kind of bright ideas. Um, and I am going to look up. All right. Page of Swords. Recognize your own intelligence. Admit that you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> so this is more about curiosity than knowing. The page, because it kicks off the court cards, we're at the beginning of this idea, you know, the, the um, element of the intelligence, of the intellect. So this talks about fostering curiosity, Aries, and call forth the waves is like just tapping into your emotional power. Let's take a look here. I always feel like I'm cheating when I look things up, but then again, this is also my time to just play with various decks. Um, see what power there is in initiating change. So they're talking about the waves as something to come in and stir things up and to kind of wipe things clean. So Aries, it's your season is coming, you know, in just a few weeks. Um, you usher in the spring and it's talking about really getting your curiosity going about how you can manifest change and bring change into your life. Sweeping change. Call forth the wave is like sweep it away. So what can you do to get rid of clutter? What can you do to lift the burdens off of yourself of work that you don't like to do or don't want to do or don't have to do? So looking at calling forth the big waves of change to come in and sweep things away and, and give you kind of a fresh intellectual start. Okay, we've got Venus in Libra in 12. Wow. Okay, Venus in Libra is also the arts, but it is social, social activity getting together with people, talking with people. It's pleasurable times with other people. Venus in Lib Libra also talks about the arts and it also gives that very refined sense of beauty. But Libra, you know, when you think of Libra, anytime you think of Libra, you think of the other, you know, me and you. And so this talks about how you can reach out to some friends in a loving way. And the 12th house is about secrets it's about privacy. It's about connection. It's that, that Neptunian house, Piscean house. So, um, okay, I'm going to revise that because of the 12th house. Aries, this is time for you to do some very private, 
personal things that give you a great deal of pleasure and that give you peace of mind. Ding, 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 there it is. The Libra 12th house connection is about peace of mind. So how can you use this wave that you're calling forth and generate your curiosity about how you can change your living space so that you have this beautiful place to retreat to, this place of peace and beauty and privacy where you can go and kind of connect with your deep mind, connect with your spirit, and just sort of back off from the the busyness of the world for a while. But certainly some sweeping change coming in and some things to, um, to just wake your brain up out of the winter doldrums. Okay. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but last week I did put timestamps in afterwards, and I will continue to do that because I do want to make it easier for you. You know, part of me is like, now you got to suffer through the whole thing if you want the reading. But no, I want to make it easier for you too. Okay. I wish I could see people's faces. I can see you, Michelle. I can see your face. All right. I'm loving these dice. Taurus. Where my Taurus is at? I see eight people. I see four likes. Hit that like button if you can. All right, Taurus. <laughs> oh, my God. How do I do it? It's magic. All right, Taurus. I feel it at my right shoulder. All right. So, Taurus. Whatever you're taking responsibility for and working on and, you know, exercising your skill and authority here, you can add hope to that, that there's a, a definite reason to be hopeful that outcomes will be good for you, that you're going to come out of the winter uh, better than you went in. And I mean, I know it's only March 3rd and spring comes on the 20 something, but, you know, I'm just very excited for it. All right, we've got North Node in Aries in the seventh. All right, North Node is the karmic way forward. It's new ground, breaking new ground, not going the familiar way. So it talks about the unfamiliar, embracing the unfamiliar and recognizing that that is the way onto new karmic territory for you rather than going the familiar, which is old karmic territory and repeating old patterns. Aries here says that the way forward is through pioneering, it's through assertiveness, it's through courage, it's through um, embracing something brand new, big brand new. Um, who are we on? We're on Taurus, right? Caps on Taurus, Moon, Virgo, Rising. Okay, Holly, so this is for you, yes. So the way forward for you, Taurus, here is to, is to, to go. You know, Taurus is usually pretty mellow, uh, fixed sign. So they're not fast movers by any stretch. <laughs> and this is saying the way forward for you is to really get, you know, kind of connect with that bull energy and think of a bull on the move, unstoppable, right? And in the seventh house, we're talking about partnerships. We're talking about commitment. So seventh house is committed partnerships. It's the people that you have an investment in. So the way forward is by you taking the lead in some partnerships, whether it's a business collaboration or a personal partnership it's time for you to take the lead in some way that takes you into new territory all right and let's take a look at the books here to to get a little bit more 
mean, hope is hope, but let's see what what uh, Lucy says. Lucy Cavendish. And I'm learning with the Kitsune deck to, to go to the end here. Um, all right. It's just basically talking about hope. To be able to stay present without fear and to help to have it help pull you through challenges. So it's saying you're being gifted with hope right now and that this time is impermanent. It will change again and again, but it's not lost eternally. So give yourself time. Let ho hope is just imagining the best future possible. Hope is a function of the intellect. So this is saying the outcomes that you want to see in the future, you need to imagine them as best you can in the present. You need to create the image of that beautiful outcome because that's the definition of hope, is um, really having a detailed picture of how you want things to turn out. And then we go boldly forward with a partnership, with a collaboration to take us into um, the activity here that will bring back the results that we're looking for. Okay. I hope that was clear. I feel like I'm pulling in a lot of, uh, a lot of resources here, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> it's feeling good to me. All right. Gemini. Where my Gemini is at? Oop. All right, Gemini. The deck is coughing them up for you already. The Fool, the Hermit, and the King of Swords. Ooh, damn. All right, Gemini. Um, you're, you need to come back into the world is what I'm seeing here. The Fool, the Hermit, and the King of Swords. It's like... Um, you need to be careful about which steps you're taking, but you still need to keep taking steps rather than withdrawing. Um, the Fool talks about a fresh new start, of course, but the Hermit and the King of Swords can really talk about um, withdrawing into a rigid place. And the last thing that we want is a rigid Gemini. I mean, Geminis are like the most mobile of the signs really and that looks like something's trying to calcify into like an opinion and a belief system that's not gonna uh, do what you need it to do all right willing entanglement okay gemini Time to look at a situation that you have taken on willingly, that you've gone into willingly, but that now is causing you to kind of withdraw and even get resentful. The King of Swords here is definitely feeling like some resentment to me. And what we need to do is, is be reminded that you chose this that you chose to take part in this. And this card, the willing entanglement, can talk about like caring for someone or you know, going into a situation where you're um, trying to nurture something into growth or, or help someone along and you feel like you're sort of bound to that until it bears fruit. So I want you to kind of look at the things that you've chosen, Gemini, the people you've chosen to hang out with, to um, work some karma out with, perhaps. And remind yourself that I have a choice here. And, you know, whenever resentment starts popping up, it is a signal that it might be time to say no to something or time to renegotiate or time to um, make our needs known. We get resentful when people aren't meeting our needs, but frequently we're not letting them know what those needs are. And the hermit says that you might have withdrawn a little bit and you're just like, okay, I'll do, but the resentment's creeping in. So I think it's time to make your needs known, Gemini, of course, in a loving way. And then maybe it's time to renegotiate a situation 
um, that is feeling more restrictive than nurturing to you. And we have Saturn in Aquarius in seven. So here's the relationship we're talking about. And Saturn definitely talks about feeling limitation, that you're feeling limitation and it's making you feel rebellious. Aquarius is the, you know, rebellion and I want to be in control of things or get me the fuck out of here. So your responsibility is to acknowledge the restlessness, acknowledge the resentment and the restlessness, and to renegotiate the relationship. That's the seventh house. Renegotiate the commitment. That's what I'm getting from these. Okay. Times like these, I am so glad I have too many decks because they sure are wonderful. And when I pulled out the mystical manga, for some reason, you know, it's not I not one that stays on my radar. But every time I pull it out, um, it just really has wonderful messages. It's beautifully written. The artwork is incredible. Uh, and I'm going to be reaching for it a lot more. One of the things I did while I was flat on my back is um, I did a lot of playing. I did a lot of playing with decks. I do it every night now. I'm getting decks out and just sitting and playing. All right. Cancer. You're telling me right in the belly, right in the middle. The High Priestess. High five, sister. All the way at the end, they said. High Priestess and Immortality. Ooh, baby. Come on, Cancer needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> All right. We have Mercury in Cancer in the first house. How interesting is that? All right. These dice would be a great practice tool for astrology. If you're just trying to practice, you know, putting together an astrological sentence, those would be a great thing to do it with. All right. So the high priestess is about secrets and inner knowing, that, that inner confidence and sureness of knowing. So cancer, um, trust yourself. Trust your feelings. Trust that knowing inside of you. Get yourself quiet on the outside and you can tap into that on the inside. Immortality. Let's take a look here. And we open straight to it. All right. The tree of immortality knows that you are growing strong and it will offer you some of its vast wisdom so that you can climb further into the journey of the soul. What you're being offered know that you are being offered time here in this lifetime to complete your soul's tasks, to be surrounded by beauty and joy, to have aspirations for your physical form. Okay. The tree of immortality asks you to embrace yourself and love yourself with patience and kindness for this love. With this love, there will come a flowering of the soul and the joy and peace which you seek will come to you in this energy of love. So, talking about um, really connecting with the immortal part of yourself, with the spirit part, which goes right along with the high priestess. The high priestess isn't about logic and, you know, that kind of logical mental faculty. It's about right brain and the part of your brain that connects you to the, the eternal well the, of the collective consciousness. And so immortality is just bearing that up, that... Um, it's like a very magical time, Cancer. And Gemini in Cancer talks about communicating your emotions, communicating in an emotional way, in a connected way, in a nurturing way, all of those Cancer 
keywords, but first house is me personally. I, me, mine. So Cancer, it's saying that you connect with your deep truth, your karmic truth, and then you communicate that um, in a way that can nurture other people. But it's talking about your personal story here, Cancer, communicating your personal story in your own way. And it's not your business whether people get something from that or not. It's just your business to, to communicate it truly, as truly as you can. All right? Because you have messages to give. There's, um, there was a thing that you probably didn't get to see because of all the kerfuffle in trying to get my live stream launched. But I will show it to you right now. Hold on a second. So, Cancer, um, I have finished the Cancer message. Let's just forge on with Leo. It's you and me, Anne. I lost everybody. I'm so sad. And, you know, I don't know why suddenly everything started freaking out today. I mean, some things have been losing it little by little. But today was was something. And specifically, um, okay. Yeah, I know it just froze. I mean, everything locked up and I was... I was doing the three finger salute over and over again and it wouldn't even it wouldn't even let me shut down that way that's how locked up it was so I'm getting kind of scared that I'm going to start losing this computer you guys and then what the fuck am I going to do <laughs> I don't know all right well onward um on to Leo I'm glad somebody's here with me darling I'm really glad Leo The hanged man. Oh, I guess I guess I could let you see what I'm doing here. Can she recover her composure? We'll find out. All right. Sunlight after darkness and the hanged man. All right, Leo, you've been hanging in there for a while and feeling like you're just at a standstill, feeling like you are at the mercy of things beyond your control. And in fact, you have been. So the question is, how have you been hanging out? Have you been freaking out or have you been surrendering? <laughs> As I talked about on the other live stream, the whole concept of surrender, meaning recognizing where you are not in control, accepting that with grace, and um, either just letting yourself be carried or shifting your efforts to the places where you do have control. Sunlight after darkness. Oh my God, this is just coming out of winter. Absolutely coming out of the winter. And look at the cherry blossoms there saying that hang in there a little while longer, just a little while longer, Leo, and things are going to be getting clearer. All right. Here we have the south node in Aries in five. Okay, so um, who was it a couple signs ago? Taurus, I think, that had the north node in Aries. So the south node in Aries, for you, Leo, it says it, you can go to your comfort place right now. And you can do it with a will. Damn it, I'm so tired of trying to push the river. I'm just going to turn around and go the other way, and I'm going to play and have a good time doing it. And in the fifth house is about play and creativity. So for you, Leo, it's about letting go of the plan to forge ahead. Now it's not right the time this week to try to push ahead. It's the time to aggressively relax, <laughs> aggressively go to your happy place and spend a lot of time there playing and creating. That is fifth house. Um, 
playing outside when you have sunlight to play and go out and play in it. Let your skin soak up some of that light. Let that sunlight hit your retinas and wait. Wait while you're playing and having a great time. This can talk about maybe just doing some, um, literally playing some games, you know, doing some physical sporty kind of stuff. But it's it's not about moving forward. It's about recreational. It's about hanged man taking time off right now. So Leo, whatever frustrations you're dealing with, computer shit. I tried real hard to figure out how to do a, a virtual green screen and decided to give up on that earlier before I broke everything. <laughs> so yeah, this week it's time for play, Leo, because you're not moving forward no matter what you do. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I hear you. Yay, three made it over. Who made it over? Please tell me. Please tell me some others that were watching made it over here too. Right. On to Virgo. you got the death card here They want the one at the very end. And we have sunlight after darkness. All right, death and sunlight after darkness. So you, Virgo, um, something is coming to an end for good and forever. And the phrase I'm hearing is you can turn your back now. You can turn your back on it now. Whatever it is that you've been enduring, that you've been getting through, it's ending to the point where you can turn your back on it and look to what's coming in. Yay! Oh my God, Sherry. Things just locked up solid and there was no getting out except shooting my computer. All right, Pluto. Ooh, we have the old Pluto sign. I kind of like that. And what a wonderful, I mean, these cards and the dice are vibing so well tonight. That's why I'm so frustrated because it really interrupted the flow. The vibe is still there, though, because death and Pluto, Pluto is the god of death, right? It's the, the, the god of Hades. Pluto is Hades. So Pluto in Aquarius in six. It's time for some radical change, Virgo. The death card here is saying something needs to end for good final for good and for final and in a radical way this is radical transformation this is a big overhaul from the ground up it's time to innovate it's time to let the old break down and go away and god i hope this isn't talking about my computer i mean i'm not a i'm not a virgo i have pluto in virgo but this is radical transformation. And in the sixth house, it's about your workplace. It's about where you live, Virgo. Virgo is the natural ruler of the sixth house. So in your workplace, whatever space you have, whether you go to a place to work or whether you do it from home, it's time for a radical transformation and innovation of your work area and how you go about that work. It might even be time to change what you do. It might even be time to say, I'm done with that now. I'm going to go for my true calling and put my true gifts out into the world. But it says once you say goodbye to the thing that really needs to end, immediately the sun comes out. So if you're feeling at sea and you're feeling in the dark here um, and you're afraid to let go of something, these things are telling me as soon as you let it die, as soon as you let it fall, 
things change up and the sun comes out and things get much, much better for you. All right. I think these dice are going to be a, a weekly feature from here on out because they really are they really are amazing. Yes, I am going to visualize getting a new computer. Well, I have, see, I have someone who's going to build it for me. It's the guy that takes care of this computer, the guy that has, um, that replaced the motherboard for me on New Year's Eve last year. New Year's Eve is when it crashed and I had to get a new motherboard. Um, okay, there we go. That makes it easy. And he has everything sourced and priced out. He's building me a huge solid state system that's going to be incredible. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic and the fact that this case of ours is not getting settled, um, things are starting to get more expensive. So the longer I wait, the more it's going to cost me. But I don't have a choice but to wait. That's the hanged man that came up for the Leos there. Don't really have a choice but to wait. OK. This is for our Libras. We got the Seven of Swords there. Ooh, Foxfire. I'll have to look that one up for sure. So it's it's fun because um, being a Leo and being a performer, when I'm on, I can be very outward focused. I'm thinking about you guys and what things look like and how you're perceiving. And it really, um, I've been getting a lot of practice in, into my body and I just pull into my body and feel my body and I will feel pulled. Like I'll feel this shoulder get pulled or I will feel a pull from the center or a pull from this way. Sometimes I'll hear a phrase all the way to the left, all the way to the right. And then I know which one to pick. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Boy, the nodes are coming up a lot tonight. All right. So for Libras, we've got the seven of swords here first. And Seven of Swords can talk about somebody getting away with something. It's kind of like um, cleaning up after a battle or somebody that comes in to sort of scavenge, you know. Um, it's the thief card. So it can talk about somebody just getting away with something that doesn't belong to them or taking advantage of a situation. Um, I'm going to look this one up. If you can, rethink your plan. If you can't come clean, don't try to make things worse by hiding your actions. Okay, it says sometimes a clever or sneaky plan seems foolproof. What could possibly go wrong? Um, but it's saying that whatever plan you have, um, something is questionable about it. So when you feel like um, any place you feel like you might cheat karma a little bit, you're not going to get away with it is what this is saying. So it's talking about revamping your plan so that things are more transparent and more honest. And what I'm hearing in my head is you don't have to manipulate for what you want and what you need. If you just say it, you're going to get it. If you, it, you know, you might be in a position where you earlier, you know, at another time you had to manipulate rather than ask, um, and that makes you feel like you're getting away with something. But this is saying that you need to revamp that plan and just need to come out with it. And then the Foxfire card, it says confusion over which direction to take. There are decisions which need to be made, but at this stage, there's no sense that one way will be the right way. Okay, so what I'm getting here is that it's time to just pause the plan. It's time to pause right now. And boy, my right hand just started buzzing. Um, okay. So this talks about the inability to choose. You must find courage and begin to walk forward into the fire around you. In this way, there will be no flame that can burn you. There will be no harm or regret, but simply the active movement in the direction of the flame, which will provide you with all you need to know at this time. All right. 
know that this Kitsune's role is to help you now and to see you through till that clear path is fully opened and bright and you can find your way on your own once again. So rather than kind of riding on someone's coattails and taking advantage of what somebody else can give you, it's time to just pause that plan and wait through this week until it becomes apparent which way to move forward. And you've got the south node here, which says it's not time to move forward this week. South node in Scorpio. Wow. Okay. In the second house. Hold on a second. So this is an intense time. And it feels like some old stuff is coming up again in a very intense way. And this can have to do with your values and your money, your value system and your money, your sense of self-worth. All right. Let me pull the threads together. So time to review over the past. And this talks about manipulation too. So I want you to review over the past the times where you felt you couldn't directly ask for what you needed or you weren't clear enough to state what you needed and you sort of ended up just manipulating and hoping someone could read your mind and give you what you need. What is at the bottom of this is a lack of self-worth. So you need to kind of review the past and look at how you can revise your idea of your own worth. Libra, all right? Your worth in and of yourself, not necessarily just in relationship with somebody else. And this is a tough one for Libra. So it's time to do some transformative work on your own self-worth and know that you deserve and you are worth whatever you need. You're worthy of it. All right. So this week, looking back, revising, transforming, looking at the patterns of low self-worth, seeing how you can transform that. And then you should be able to move forward after that with being able to ask for what you need rather than manipulate for it. And we're also waiting to be very clear on what we need. So going back over that, that those past patterns of low self-worth and really looking for clarity on being able to say, here's what I need. And of course, that has to be grounded in, I deserve this as a human being. I deserve this and I'm worthy of it. Pretty heavy message there for you, Libra. All right. I'm so sad that we lost everybody. We had like eight or nine people here, and that's a big crowd for me. <laughs> Oop, let's see what popped out. Ooh, it popped out upside down. Yikes. Scorpio. <laughs> we got the star coming upside down for you, darling. Well, I mean, the moon in Scorpio, where we're at right now, does bring some extremes of things, and this has certainly been an extreme evening. All right. From the heart, they said, center left. Memories of the forgotten self in the upside down star. The star is hope and inspiration. And upside down, it says we're not feeling hopeful and we're not feeling inspired. And this memories of the forgotten self. All right, let me, um, let me see what they say about star upside down. Ask yourself, and this is what's nice about this deck too, instead of just reversed meanings, um, for the minors there are just meanings, but for the majors they give you questions for the reverse. And this says, ask yourself, am I hiding my light under a barrel? Where can I find the healing and refreshment that I need? So Scorpio, you're not taking good care of yourself. Um, it's time to take care of yourself on the, on the subtler levels. All right. And then we have memories of the forgotten self. So it's time to acknowledge the parts of yourself that you've been neglecting 
and to bring those to the fore. All right, the forgotten self showing you scenes of who you once were in this lifetime, the visions you had as a child, the times you stood firm in your own trust and belief in yourself. All right, it will whisper to you of the truths of the soul, sharing the secrets of who you are, reviving memories and dreams of other times and within this lifetime. Then that voice will go stronger, showing you moment after moment until you, bright soul, finally remember. So here's the bright soul upside down. Here's the bright soul hiding and in reverse and forgetting who they are. And this is saying it's time to remember. Mufasa says, remember who you are, Simba. So time to reconnect with those old dreams, those old memories, that old sense of your magical self, Scorpio, and uncover it again. Try to pull some of those layers off. We have the sun in Virgo in the seventh. It's time, Scorpio, to acknowledge that you have some service to offer. That you being who you are and your understanding of the workings of the universe and your curiosity about the machinations of the universe um, can be of service to people. Virgo talks about service. And in the seventh house, it's talking about committed relationships. So your relationships right now, Scorpio, can benefit from you shining your light in them, from you bringing yourself forward in all your glorious magical intensity and saying, here's what I have to offer you. Here's how I see things can be transformed and made better. Because Virgo, remember, is about process and the details of process and making it efficient and making it a process that makes sense. And it's saying that you need to insert yourself and your personality into that process, Scorpio, in the, the context of relationship, whether that's romantic relationship or business relationship. It's committed relationships. Can also be enemies, known enemies. So that's interesting, too. But... Scorpio, it really is about you reconnecting with yourself, the self that's kind of been buried and lost and letting those dreams resurface again, sharing them with business partners, romantic partners, and saying, here's how we can rearrange how we do things to make it better. All right. Scorpio, that's our, that was Scorpio. Sagittarius, that was too big of a chunk falling out. I'm not to reading all those cards. All right. And I don't have to shuffle anymore either. All right, Sag. <laughs> now they're starting to give me body parts. That one was right ear lobe. Okay. My guides are really funny. So we have the hanged man for you as well, Sagittarius. Oh, God, they're so funny. Right armpit is what I got that time. <laughs> All right, the hanged man and beneath the surface. So interestingly, at least for um, Leo and Sagittarius fire signs, it is not time to go pushing forward this week. It's time to hang out and go deep rather than, you know, go forward. That's what I'm going to say for you, Sag. Go deep instead of going forward. And we've got Mercury in Libra in the sixth. So altogether, you know, um, the hanged man always wants to ask us how we're waiting. It states as a fact that we are waiting, that we are hanging out. But it mostly asks, how are we waiting? What are we doing with that time? And this is where I always hear that Mr. Rogers song, let's think of something to do while we're waiting. Um, 
And what are the things you can do? You can meditate and this says you can go under the surface. You can go deep, you can do some meditation and you can discover um, what's hanging out in your unconscious that needs to be brought forward here because that will let you know how you're going to move forward. Um, let's see. Yep, it's talking about knowing your true potential by going deep inside. Um, take a deep breath and dive deep. There's no need for fear or panic. Remain calm no matter how challenging it can seem to be beneath the world in which others seem content to live. This life is not for you, friend, and nor are the ailments and personal stunting of growth that others experience over and over because they never found a way to go beneath the apparent nature of reality and go deep within. Okay. She asks you to join her in the quest for the hidden depths of life. And Sagittarians can be very external. Uh, you know, ruled by Jupiter, they're all about spreading out and broadening their horizons and traveling and going and playing out sports, physical, all that kind of stuff. So this time, Sag, since you're parked anyway, it's time to say, all right, let's just turn it this way. Go deep down in, connect with your guides, see what they bring to you. And here we have Mercury and Libra in the sixth. So communication, time to communicate or work with ideas in a way um, that generates peace and harmony. So we've, we've had Mercury and Libra once before. No, we had Venus and Libra. Mercury and Libra is straight up about negotiating negotiations, talking with someone about here's what I need, here's what you need. The, the um, compromise, you know, the back and forth and the exchange of ideas. And you too, this is about work and service. It can also be about physical health. But we need to look at communications and how we can make our communications A, pleasing, um, B, kind, communicating in a kind way um, and the setting for this is sixth house which is physical health issues but it is also work workplace work ethic those kind of things the things that you do for a job so we can be communicating with people in the workplace but it needs to be done um, in a back and forth way in a give and take way in a way that that is negotiating and bringing the balance back this can also be talking about the balance between work and your deeper needs right okay How long has this one been going? Where are we at? Nine o'clock. All right. I'm doing a lot of shuffling because that calms me down. <laughs> Just caught myself. Why are you shuffling? You don't need to shuffle because it calms me down. All right, cappies. Ooh, look at the green showing up. This is the first pentacle we've had tonight. got that foxfire again that was talking about not knowing the way forward and we've got seven of pentacles here so this talks about harvest but also about just tending something into fruition god a note again All right. 
So Foxfire said that, you know, you have to kind of wait to see which way the direction is and being willing to move forward into the fire to discover which way the path forward is. This is saying the path forward is through gentleness, kindness, um, through negotiation, again, Libra. And in the fourth house, this is on the home front for you, Capricorn. So time to look at tending your garden. There might be some decisions to be made there. Uh, maybe you're going to do something a little bit differently. Let me look at that Foxfire again. So the one, I love this deck. The one thing I don't like about it is that the meanings are just, there's not really anything that stands out saying, here's what this card is about. And I'm thinking I may go into this book and write some things down to sort of boil it down. Um, so it talks about confusion over which direction to take. Inertia. Um, so this card talks about busting the inertia, burning away the doubt and the concerns and lighting the road. This Kitsune knows you have been lost and will take you forward with a long, bright chain of fire stretching into the distance. But first, like the fox, you must find your courage. All right. Um, the negativity will be burned away until all that remains is the hope and the courage and the passion. Once again, trust the fires of the fox and begin to step into the bright heart of the flame. So this does talk about a little bit of a test here, Capricorn, that you're going through an uncomfortable period Um you know, Capricorn is really all about, here's what I want to achieve. Here's what I want to harvest. Your focus is on the end result and the outcome. And that's not a bad way to be at all. You know, how can we know how to get to some place if we don't know the, the place we're trying to get to? But this is saying that we might be a little too focused on that outcome. And in the present time, um, there's a little bit of something that, that you need to deal with. That's a very unclear card. Sorry, I'm going back again. I mean, there's a, oh, there's five here now. Yay, who else made it over? <sighs> All right. The negativity will be, okay. So some negativity has come up and you're feeling stalled towards the goal that you've set for yourself, Capricorn. But it's saying to be brave, keep pushing forward. The node says keep pushing forward. Ask for help. See who else is with you on this in the home front. Because this is talking about fourth house, which is your home, your family, actual real estate, physical house, those kinds of things. And also your emotional underpinnings. So it might be time to acknowledge like your very early childhood and what kind of... Um, patterns there were in achievement, what kind of encouragement you got or didn't get as you were on your way to achievement, because there's negativity cropping up here. And it's kind of in the way of you moving forward. And the way to move forward is to kind of bring another person in and talk some things out with them on a personal basis. All right. That's what I'm getting there. It doesn't seem too clear to me. That Foxfire card is a tricky one. I'm going to have to spend some time with that because obviously there are some things for me to learn there. All right. Oh, you saw that, right? Whip. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Oh, and this is our last one. This is Aquarius. Cut these again. All right. Right there, they say. Growth. All right, this doesn't um, surprise me. Because Aquarius, you have been through the mill 
with all of these planets. Um, oh yes, Holly, that inner crit, that negativity could absolutely be your inner critic, and that's what I'm talking about—the things that got installed early on. You know, those voices, those criticisms, those you're too much this and not enough that. Absolutely, that negativity can be your own inner critic. So um, maybe it's time to suspend that. And that's that north node in Libra. In the fourth is ask somebody that loves you what the truth of you is in this case. When you're criticizing, put give it to them and they're going to say, listen, you're fabulous. You are so skilled. You know what you're doing. So that's what that was talking about. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for that, Holly. That really clarified it for me. So that is the communication, um, you know, with someone that Libra is ask communication for someone else so that you can get some loving thoughts about yourself in there again. All right. Aquarius. You've taken responsibility, you've done the work, and now you're going, okay, where's my reward? Well, the reward is growth. You're moving forward. And here's the fucking North Node again. Oh my God, you guys. It's been at least five times that we've gotten a North or South Node rather than planets here. It's just incredible. So that tells me that a lot of us are wrestling with karmic stuff. The North Node and South Node are all about karma. Let's talk about those a little bit. Um, and you're so welcome, Holly. Let's talk about those a little bit. These are karmic placements in the chart. The South Node shows the way that you have come. This is where you've come from. It's familiar territory, which means it's the easy way. You know, they talk about... Um, Better the devil you know. We all choose the pain that we're familiar with rather than the brightness that we're unfamiliar with. You know, we're going to say, well, hey, you know, yeah, I'll stay in this shitty relationship because at least I know what kind of shitty it is rather than taking a gamble on something new that might be shitty in a whole new way. Forgetting the fact that it might be something fabulous. So the North Node shows the way forward the unfamiliar path, the new karmic territory. South node is we're going back over our past patterns. We're just going to repeat those patterns because it's really comfortable and I don't even have to think about it, even if it's incredibly self-destructive. North node says, here's the way forward. Here's where you're going to have to pull up your courage and start forging a new path. So the new path for you, Aquarius, is in looking at the details of where you're at and what you want to accomplish um, and how you're putting yourself in that. Okay, so first house is about your physical body, but it is me, me, my personality, my physical body, me as a person in a body this lifetime. And... Aquarians can have kind of a hard time being in a body because Aquarians and Pisceans as well, like Scorpio, Pisces, and Aquarius, all have such strong memories of what it's like not to be on this planet in a body. You know, um, Pisces remembers what it's like to be in unity with the whole Aquarius remembers what it's like to be flying around in the stars. They have a really hard time with the limitation of a body. And Scorpio just re knows the workings of the universe. So it's hard to kind of, you know, have to deal with it in the nuts and bolts fashion rather than wildly magical like they're used to. But Aquarians have a tough time just being here on this planet. It's very limiting to them. And their response can be, you know, fuck it, blow it all up. So the way forward for you, Aquarius, is to really get into your body and love that body and love the person that you are in the confines of that body in this lifetime. And bring back into your memory why you chose to come here, right? Why you chose to come here. Here was the thing that I was going to accomplish when I came here. And growth is happening, but it gets uncomfortable and I'm feeling, you know, limited. 
So we need to find the way forward here. And also that way is in service, being personally in service to someone else, personally in service to the planet. Because remember, Aquarius, you did come here with a big job to do. You came here to move us forward. And in this particular time, that is critically important for us. We need the Aquarians right now. We need the ones that can see where we're supposed to be heading and that know how to blow up the old, you know? We need the Aquarians here to bust the our, our tendency to go that south node path and to forge us forward towards the north node. Um, but with Virgo here, Aquarius, it really is about the details of how you're going to accomplish that personally. All right. And the details of how you are going to serve humanity in that way. So there we get the humanitarian vibe of Aquarius as well. And this has to do with you personally, your personal physical body, you showing up, being who you are, doing that work. All right. And then growth comes. So you're on the verge here, Aquarius. You might feel like you're waiting and waiting and waiting for ships to come in. But we're, we're about to experience a growth spurt, I think, all of us. A lot of us tonight, um, the messages are talking about hanging out and just kind of being in the doldrums, you know. But, um, but spring is on its way. Spring is on its way, you guys. Let me see here. And now I'm down to two. Thank you. Thank you for the ones that hung out with me. Ah, it's such a weird thing. You know, I really do want to start having some Zoom meetings, but I'm not sure how I would gather people for that. Um, I've been thinking, you know, I could do a video and just say when and where the Zoom thing is going to be and that you've got to email me at my Zenwich address to get the link. And then we can start doing... Um, some Zoom meetings where I can see everybody and where there can actually be a dialogue. Because um, as much as I like doing this, um, it's hard. It's hard when I can't see people and I can't hear people and when my electronics fuck up and take a shit in the middle of everything. <laughs> All right. Anyway, and my first um, stream was 47 minutes, and I see this one's 47 minutes as well. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bail out here. <clears throat> I do believe. I'm hearing I need to do one more. No, Holly, I am not on Instagram, and that's because I don't do any of this on my phone. And you still, you still can't post to Instagram from a computer in any way that makes any sense. You've got to, you know, get some other kind of fucking platform and it kind of pisses me off. <laughs> I'm letting fly now, you guys. Can you tell? Um, so, I, in fact, I just looked at that again today because somebody else asked about Instagram and I went on there and it's like, no, God damn it. They want, you know, I have to do it from my phone and I don't operate from my phone that way. I'm not going to shoot videos of doing readings with my freaking phone when I've got, you know, this set up. So that's why I'm not on Instagram. And if anybody, you know, you keep seeing these things of, oh, now you can post to Instagram from a computer. Well, you really can't. It's a lie. You still have to like buy something or use some other third party platform to do it. And I'm just not down with that. I have enough that I'm dealing with. So... You know, Instagram and TikTok, and it's like I, I keep trying to add these things, but um, but I am working under a lot of limitation, um, physical limitation, mental energy limitation, and this last week was a big reminder of the limitations that can fall on me at any second and just yank me right out of the game. So I am consciously not going, I've got to add TikTok and I got to add Instagram and I got to get, because I know I can't keep up with those things, you know, um, having Monday and Friday videos and Wednesday and Saturday live streams 
is very comfortable for me right now and it definitely keeps me working and I I am going to expand those things. I really want to start doing some group ritual um, that goes beyond just prayer circle and you know, I've got a lot of writing I want to do. There's all kinds of stuff, but Instagram is just not making itself an easy thing for me to use. So unfortunately, no. I even to just like post, you know, a link to a video, maybe I could just do that. I don't know. The first problem was I went to Instagram and I wanted to change um, the account name to the Zenwich and it wouldn't let me do it. It wouldn't let me do it. You know, you just changed your name two weeks ago. I don't use Instagram ever. No, I didn't change my name two weeks ago, but it just wouldn't fucking let me do it. So it fights me. Oh, Rose. Hi, honey. <laughs> oh, you're coming in at the end of the cluster. You who? Yeah. All right. I've got some cards in my hands here. I just want to see. This was just a general overall second reading the two of pentacles the ten of wands and the eight of wands all right so we're all juggling resources we're all dealing with the rocky emotions watching um congress crawling towards relief and we're carrying a burden you know we are still under the burden of a pandemic we are still under the burden of winter and we're still under the burden of white supremacists you know even though we've had a big infusion of hope um, things have not actually changed in a big way in fact I saw that um, they postponed I think they stayed um, longer the house postponed their meeting tomorrow because there have been reports from um like Homeland Security and stuff, that these white supremacist groups were planning to breach the Capitol again tomorrow because there's been this thing going out on all their platforms that March 4th is the real inauguration, that Donald Trump really is still president and March 4th is going to be his real inauguration. So we've got delusional people that are all pointed at tomorrow's date. So the House said we're not going to meet. The Senate said they are still going to meet so, you know, we're still under this. That's what that Ten of Wands is saying, is we're still carrying this load. But Eight of Wands here says, hang in there. Things are going to start moving forward pretty quickly. And we get a change of energy. All right, Firefox, give us a final message for all of us here. You... I pick you, the sentinel. Look at that. All right. Constant vigilance. Who was that? That was uh, Alistair Moody in Harry Potter. Constant vigilance. So the sentinel just says, it's time to really keep your eyes open and let's keep watching. We can't go to sleep now. We can't think that, you know, there's an adult in the room and so we can relax our guard. The Sentinel is saying we have to keep watch. And we have to keep watch on um, the things that are happening in all of the issues, you know, as far as police brutality goes, as far as um, equity goes, as far as the minimum wage goes, as far as you know, uh, racism and white supremacy and all of these issues, we cannot relax. We cannot relax. So I want you to make sure that you have um, resist bot on your phone. Text resist to 50409. And it makes it so easy to contact your representatives, your senators, all the way up to the White House with um, the things that you want to say. Okay, the moon rolled out here. The moon in Cancer. Oops, sorry, come back. Moon in Cancer in the first house. And we need to take very good care of ourselves physically. Um, 
Moon in Cancer is all about self-nurturing and self-care. And the moon represents your habits. It's things that happen on a daily basis, all right? Neptune can represent habits as well in 12th house, but the moon itself is about habits and, um, and routine. And this is talking about what are your habits for self-care, for self-nurturing. And cancer is the nurturing part. First house is your own physical body. So what is your routine? What do you have built in on a daily basis? And today I just spent a lot of time um, really thinking about restructuring my day again. You know, last summer, um, spring and summer. Yeah, I know. Aren't they fabulous? Um, last spring and summer when you know, we were under the first rush of panic of this pandemic and everything was just like, Ugh. and I thought, you know, I'd get up every morning and go to the computer right away and start reading news. And it's like, nope, I need to change my life. So I would make my coffee and go downstairs and sit on the back porch with my husband and I'd take my phone out there with me. But the only thing I would look at is my Astro Matrix um, program and look at my planets for the day and what's going on there. So I was checking in with myself and then I would um, come in and do my puja and then, you know, drink my coffee and then I would turn the computer on. And then another part of my daily schedule was my yoga, which I had to stop doing when my shoulder blew out. So I'm really looking at um, rebuilding my day, rebuilding my routine and my habits. And that's exactly what this is talking about with the eye towards how do you take care of your physical health? How do you take care of your physical body? What kind of food are you eating? Cancer rules the stomach. And how are you nurturing yourself with food, with good healthy food? How are you taking care of your physical body? And also with the sentinel here, are you still wearing your masks? When we see Texas, what the hell? Nope, nobody has to wear a mask anymore. We're fine. Cases are going down. Nobody has to wear a mask. And watch, when the cases go skyrocketing again, they're going to be like, what happened? So, yeah, it just, it's it's very, very, very frustrating. Um, so do not relax your vigil as far as keeping yourself safe. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. I hope that everybody's getting closer to getting vaccinated. Um, my brother-in-law, just got vaccinated last Thursday. So that's like the first of the family that lives down here. And we're getting registered in every place we can think of and just waiting for some place to say, hey, come on, you know. So again, be vigilant. Things are going to start changing, but we're still under it and we can't relax just yet. But what we can do is ramp up our own self-care and make sure that we're getting everything that we need. So right now, Give that woman a hug, would you please? Give her a hug for me. Tell her I said thank you so much for showing up. Thank you so much for following me through my computer glitches and finding me again after everything froze. Thank you for giving me a purpose in my life. Um, just give her a hug and pat her on the back. Tell her she's doing great. Tell her she's doing really well, and then I'm very grateful for her, okay? Um, oh, Holly, vaccines here in uh, the county next to ours, they've gone to a lottery system. It's so disorganized. It's like catch as catch can. Go ahead, register. If your number comes up, you'll get a vaccine. Just a clusterfuck. And um, in my county, too, it's just like vaccine? What vaccines? We don't know. You know, they'll they'll vaccinate maybe 300 people a week through the health department. It's just slow, 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 slow. It's ridiculous. Um, we have seen, though, that with Johnson & Johnson's vaccine getting approved by the FDA, um, now Biden is saying that there will be enough for every adult to be vaccinated by the end of May. Or by May, I think he said. I think he might have said the end of May. So, you know, just a few months and hopefully we'll have a fully vaccinated population. And Rose, I totally agree with you. When the cases skyrocket, they'll blame everybody but themselves because that's what they do. So oh, I'm glad, Sherry. I'm glad you are. I mean, we're just, 
like this says we're you know can't relax yet folks we can't relax yet but eight of wands there definitely says something's going to start moving forward quickly and I mean once spring comes it's going to be so difficult not to just freak out and break all the rules but what's going to make me happy and keep me from freaking out and breaking all the rules is just being able to go out and have a fire out back again you know I was sitting out there I sat down in my chair I haven't sat in that chair for months and it's like oh look here's the fireplace I can't wait until it's having a fire again so oh my gosh all right you guys Again, thank you so much for hanging out with me and following my glitchy computer from one live stream to the next. If you haven't hit that like button and you're still here, please hit it. I'm going to pull these videos down. I'm going to download these and uh, put them together into a new video without all the bullshit in between. And then I'll put it back up again for everybody to see. So good. I'm hoping you can be in the next wave, Rose. I hope that we all are. Ooh. Okay, hold on. My left ear just started ringing on me real bad. All right. All right, two of wands. That's just responsibility. All right, you guys, I really am leaving. <laughs> I have such a hard time saying goodbye. Um, I know. I, I agree with you, Rose. I am going to be wearing masks forevermore. I mean, we were wearing masks before any cases hit near us because I got very sick at the beginning of March last year. I got a horrible case of bronchitis. And um, so I was going to the store wearing a mask anyway. And yeah, I mean, ha who else here has had um, dreams about... Um, freaking out because people around you aren't wearing masks. I've had dreams where I'm in it and everybody around me is without a mask and I'm flipping out. So it has made its way into our unconscious mind, which means it's here to stay. So, all right, you guys, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you on Friday for the unboxing of the wonderful deck that Sherry sent me, the Wicca Oracle. And then I will see you on Saturday for a prayer circle. Take care. Be good. <laughs> Blessed be.